the Nikki Glaser podcast. Here is Nikki. Hello, here I am. It's Monday. Welcome to the Nikki Glazer podcast. I'm Nikki Glazer. In uh, studio with me is Andrew Collin. Welcome hey. up to the 12th floor. Hey, man. It's good to be up this high. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the third floor kicking it where the normal people hang What's out. What's going on with your hair today, buddy? Like, I want you to get a good so- side profile for the people watching on YouTube. Just uh, go, go all the way to the side. Look all the way that way. <laughs> Just zoom into that, please, whoever's <laughs> editing the video. Something's going on. Did you put a product in? Uh, a while ago. <laughs> a while ago. <laughs> there is product in here. I don't know if it's active. Is it? When does product stop being active? What kind active? of product? A food product? <laughs> yes, a, uh, mayonnaise with a little <laughs> bit of uh, oregano. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know um whatever whatever i mean i know that you bought a, a pomade or a, a kind of a mousse a a curl cream <laughs> you got there yeah a curl cream a curl is what enhancer. we found a curl enhancer yes which i like to do is congealing that's what you do when you do the curls you put the curl enhancer in and you put your wet hair mm-hmm. you do if you want to get curls with your like straight like if you have kinky hair girls like like that have curl in it but it's not like curly curly you wet your hair you make sure your hands run through it you piece it out with your fingers you dump it in the sink and you dip it in water in the sink and then you congeal yeah you put you put the curl cream in your hair yes. and then you squ- you squish and you make sure that they don't get they stay in place do you which congeal I, which i did last night <laughs> yeah i fell asleep with it perfectly congealed. Yeah. Exactly. It looks like looks like know. a wet dog after he shook just twice. I hate when you just go to bed with it. It's it's almost dry to the point where it's going to look good and then you go to bed. Oh, there's nothing worse with a I mean this hair needs to be seen by one person or one other person. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I had it all curled up, and then I woke up today. I, I thought we were recording with our lovely guest, Anya Marina. Yes, by the way, Anya Marina is joining us not just for the theme song, but she is live via Zoom. In, Hi, Anya. In Woodstock, right? Hey, guys. No, uh, I guess I'm in the Hudson Valley. I'm close to Woodstock. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Get me out um, of here. Anya's in to- Arizona. <laughs> we're like at, representing almost every time zone. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah we all are. of us are wearing our Nikki Glazer swag, and Nikki's wearing my T-shirt. Yeah, and I'm none wearing. Of us discussed this earlier. Anya's shirt. That's wild. Look at us. That's pretty cute of us. Speaking of merch, there's a new, uh, <laughs> there's a new page of merch that you can get hats and shirts. You go to Pod Merch. Is that right? Uh, pod uh, Shop. No. Pod Shop. Pod, pod Shop. Dot Nikki Glazer. Dot com to check out the new um, Nikki Glazer podcast merchandise, which I did an announcement of on Thursday. Where I said that I was, I like made it sound like I was announcing I was pregnant, and it was like so real. Like oh. I really sold it. N- Noah, when you listened, I mean, you knew what I was recording. When you listened to it, did you even yeah. get the sense that like maybe I was telling you something, even though yeah, you know that's what exactly the announcement what was? I thought. I thought you were using it as like a way to like tell me <laughs> what the the thing that you were going for. I don't want to ruin it for people who haven't heard it. But I was yeah, like, wait go a back minute. and listen Is, to that announcement. Did she? What? What's happening I here? really fooled people. I mean, you're going to be like the girl that cried baby. I know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's. I don't think you should j- j- joke about those things. Yeah. But I'm okay with not having kids after my weekend. I, um, I babysat for Arlo <laughs> on Friday, and I'm good. That's all it took? Three hours. Yeah. It was 9 to 12. It, sh- it felt like 9-11. <laughs> that short go. it was so it was so difficult and it was only four. one plane or yeah. both kids he it was only one one <laughs> oh, wow. one child poppy would have like offset it a little bit because it would have been like they could have each other to like feed off of their energy because i was tr- you know i guess it's different when you're a parent you can kind of um like they can do their own thing like in your house like you don't have to watch them constantly but he needed constant like my attention it was like being on stage i related it i was talking about it to someone and i was like oh my god it was like i didn't have time to 
take a sip of water. I didn't have time to go to the bathroom. I didn't have time to eat. There was nothing that I could do to take care of myself. It was like I was on for three hours of like listening, active listening, active talking, voices, oh. crazy, and like doing, <laughs> and it was like doing the same joke over and over and over because God forbid you make a kid laugh one time with a thing. They, again, again, and then they start crying if you like don't do it again. It was so, finally, we ran out of stuff to like actively do within about 20 minutes like that wasn't TV and he was like, I wanna watch TV and I was like, thank God. And I'm like, are you caught up on The Bachelor? And he's like, no, I <laughs> would prefer to watch autistic men color in anime. Oh, or wow. like uh That is Pokemon. The Bachelor, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it was a competition. <laughs> this we season. Watched, we, he's obsessed. He knows exactly what he wants. Kids know screens. And he was like, I want... He, I want Pokemon drawing. And when I typed in po Pokemon drawing, so, sure enough, the first thing that comes up, he's like, that one. And we watch a man color in Pokemons for an hour. No. Just and to a, a, a just a just a a rhythm that there's like a music behind it, no talking, but just like da drawing hundreds of Pokemon. How was that? That must have been easy then. You would think. But yeah. it's like, well that's what's that one? Well that's and that's what the Charmander. And that's what would you wa watch it? Watch it. If he even sensed that I was on my like, you can't be on your phone. There was no. I like that kids are like paying attention to your attention. Like, no, no, get off your phone. W watch oh. this with me. I am constantly watching so he you to make sure I parent. was watching. It was nuts. It was I would. So exhausting. I would think that there should be a. Uh, a I learned a lot about Pokemon. For a kids, vo kids' voices need to get lower and quicker. They're always up here. I think they are Everything because of all the, all the testosterone and like. Yeah. Is there Milk any part now. of you that's like insulted that he's entertained by Pokemon maybe more than by you? Mm, well, there's not much. I was very happy that I could that we were like I'm happy to just admit my strengths. Like my house doesn't have that many toys. I was like scouring for anything that we could make like toys. Oh, he was out here. Of. He was here. It was an away game. It was, so Whoa. we didn't have if we were at his place, yeah, <laughs> yeah we could have played played games, but there was like just that. not a lot to do. It was so cold outside we couldn't really like hang out and go for walks and stuff and um and I gave him like some presents I got him in Mexico and he didn't care for those and so that ran out quickly and so then it was Pokemon time and <laughs> what I did learn though is that Pokemon watching people draw is soothing and kind of cool. And I learned I learned Pokemon's names. Like I learned about Pokemon and his encyclopedic knowledge of these Pokemon's names as a four-year-old is so impressive because they're weird names, you know, that don't really make sense. And he would, they would start drawing like the fucking tail of it or even the ear and he would be like, the only one I remember now is Charmander or like Jigglypuff. Like he would just know right away. And he, it's not like he can read and see like Jigglypuff. That's Jigglypuff. He's just for just from hearing it. Kids' memories are insane. Yeah. Like I don't even, they they know way more than oh. I do. Very quickly. Like m my nephew Augie knows more about dinosaurs than like a person that works at a museum. Mm. <laughs> I'm telling, it's wild. Yes, like yes. And the long names, like the technical, like ones yes. you never even, you're like, no, they never found his were fossil. Were you good at anything? No. <laughs> when you were a kid? Like, I put it in curl gel once. Yeah. <laughs> it's still in. <laughs> it's still in from when I was a baby boy. <laughs> you used to wipe it on your carpet. Now it's in your but, hair. But here's... <laughs> Yeah, that's a, a 90, uh, 99 episode. <laughs> Ham drip. Ham drip. Um, you could use him, though, like once every two weeks for material. You know? You could make a whole hour about being... <laughs> Like, it you know. was interesting to be put back. I like back. the 9-11 joke. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I hope that's in the next hour. Yeah, that's just right off the dome. Um, I used to have a joke about babysitting and how it's like it's hard because it's like you're a mother, but you also don't love them. Yes. Um, I do love Arlo, but obviously not as much as a parent would, but I love him more than kids I was babies just randomly babysit for. But it brought me back to 2000. Nine, the last time I babysat, it was the, my number one thing that I used to do for income before comedy, like took over. And I dropped out of babysitting before I could even pay my bills with comedy. I mean, I was just like, I can't do it anymore because it, and it, I was reminded of it with this three hour stretch of just looking at the clock, like, when is my mom coming to get him? Because I can't keep doing these bits over and over. For a while, we were doing bits <laughs> with these. Um, Did you try giving them like Z Quill and. No, <laughs> like drug him, you know. He wasn't hungry, uh, so I tried. I tried to wrap it in ham and massage his throat. 
Um, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> is he interested in the dog at all? Like, is can that oh, be a distraction? I mean, he, Luigi lives with him a lot, and so no, like he's just <laughs> over it right away. And what's there to do with a dog? I don't know how kids fucking entertain themselves before toys and media and all this stuff. Like, it really is fascinating. Cartoons, to me. cartoons. No, but I mean, like back in like days, like where they just had like a wooden cup and they would have like a ball oh. attached <laughs> to a string and they yeah. try to get the ball in the cup. Yeah, or you become Mozart or something. You give him something to, right. w- you know, some or one soccer ball. God, something makes me want to shake him and just go, <laughs> learn an instrument now. Like, start learning now. Yeah. You got so much. You could do anything. Sounds you like can you're do, yelling you at can yourself. You could literally do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, Nikki. <laughs> I just know yeah, that. Nikki, you can love Pokemon. <laughs> if there, there is no way, no way that I would ever be able to accomplish anything new or like a new hobby if i had kids no way Mm. unless i hired you know did the thing where i hired nannies and then i would be like just filled with guilt constantly i'm filled with guilt when i leave luigi for four hours i the whole time i'm doing anything else it's there's a under like there's just a stream of guilt of my dog being alone and just like looking at the door I, i wouldn't be able to function just um I, I just well, that's why people become like stage moms because they're like, I can't learn anything new. Let me put my kid mm, with a bunch of pedophiles right. and have him make yes. money. <laughs> Anya, um, how? Oh, wait, so we, I want to promote your dates. You're you're coming to New York to do a show at Rockwood. I really want besties to come out if they're in the New York area. Can you tell us all the details? Yeah, Thursday, uh, St. Patrick's Day, which was a great choice on my part. (laughs) It's going to be annoying. (laughs) No, but it's an early show. You can come to Rockwood. I think doors open at 6. I play at 7. You can get out of there and go to the bar with your friends or whatever you want to do. It's Rockwood Stage 3, which is on Orchard Street. And I'm playing an hour set. And I have a special guest, Matt Pond, PA. So Matt and Chris from Matt Pond, PA are going to do... like 20 minutes. Nice. The show. And I think it's their last show before they form a new band, uh, which I can't announce the name, but I'm excited for them. They're coming out with a new record, new band name, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I've been talking to Matt That's about the name? that. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. 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 Yeah. That actually would be a great name. It's not a bad name. I have a Arrested chick. Development. <laughs> Wait, Are what we- is it? There was a band called Chick 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 that was just three exclamation points. They were like played Coachella or something. Oh, and you. So you, maybe blah, blah, blah. You say good. Chick Chick Chick. It's like yeah. the Dixie Chicks. <laughs> chicks. My chicks. boyfriend does not use exclamation marks in text ever. He won't write an exclamation mark. I don't blame ever. him. Ever. It just is. It just is. Now it's almost like his thing where he's just like, I won't do it. another night. He had to put in like a password to get on fucking. Oh, we watched Love is Blind to get on Netflix. And it's like, I have an exclamation mark in the password. And I was like, and I'm sorry to tell you this, but you have to write an exclamation mark. And he was like. <laughs> Will you come over here and do it? It was just kind of, it was, yeah. it was, like it was always it like out. the killing of a spider of a girlfriend. Like, I have to do that for him. And Aww. he is, which, by the way, no one has to kill a spider for me because I don't kill spiders. But, you know, it's the, the trope. At least not loudly. Yeah. Love is blind. Oh, my um, God. Anya has, Anya was talking to me about it when I was in Cabo. I tried to watch it initially because, but then it wasn't showing up on our Netflix for some reason in Mexico. It was like a delayed. So I didn't get into it. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to wait to watch this with my man because it's such a fun thing to just consume. And we, he loves like these dating. He can get, you know, wrapped up in these shows too. Started it on Thursday, uh, Wednesday. Um, Haven't finished it yet, but man is season two good. Did you watch the first season, uh, Noah or Andrew? Yeah. Okay. Um, Noah, have you watched the second season? I haven't because my man does not watch those shows and we have like one TV, so I can't watch anything like that. Gosh. What about on your device? Oh yeah, I guess I have that. (laughs) Yeah, you could watch it on your device, but it's not not fun to watch these shows alone. Anya, you watch these shows alone. Is there any part of you that like wants to like talk to someone about it though that's watching it also? So what do you do? Like, can we talk about the stereotypes? Well, I have a degree in Love Is Blind, (laughs) U.S., Japan, and Brazil. You watch them all. 
I watched them all in their original language. Now, wow. did, had you watched Well, Love is Blind season one when it first came out or were you new to it this this time around? You, you know what's weird is I, I'm i sure that I did, but then I'll see little clips from it and I'm like, I don't recognize any of these people, but maybe that's just how memory works when you watch a really trashy reality show, you don't recall any of these people. I don't remember them, but I know I watched it. You I'm did watch it, okay. Because I, I loved Love is Blind one. It was a pandemic, like a first kind of show that came out during the pandemic. Did you watch Love is Blind 1? I watched the first one, yeah. I liked, I liked the first one. Man. It's so you, unique where that's yes. why I don't think I've watched the second one yet because when something's so singular in a way, mm -hmm. it's like it can't be beat. Like, or like that idea is like already like... People were saying, at least Chris had told me that people had said that season two wasn't as good as season one, but I have to say I am very caught up in it and very invested. It is like... A good book that I can't wait to get back to and just I am I'm loving it so much and it's just so for those of you who don't know what it is these people meet in these pods they just they they fall in love based on just their voices and talking over a 10 day period 14 15 guys 15 girls all mix and mingle and talk through the wall at each other and they have these intimate conversations and then very quickly they start like matching up and like figuring out who they like and then by the sec by the first episode there's they reveal like they start going like they start getting engaged b out, like uh, outside of the wall like the there's a wall between them when they get engaged they haven't seen each other sight unseen and then there's the reveal and they see each other and so by you think the whole thing is going to be like them in these pods but it's only the first two episodes and then they're out and they're trying to figure out if they're going to get married they have four weeks to live together they go on vacation first in mexico for like five days i'm guessing is there a glory hole this season <laughs> um <laughs> wrong show <laughs> that would be so funny <laughs> Before you come out. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you hear Lisa Gilroy? Did you see Lisa Gilroy's uh, take on Love is Blind? She's the one I'm obsessed with on Instagram. She was doing, she did like a kind of reel oh, about yes. it. Yes. And it's through the wall. And she's like, this is like a, a oh, you know, yeah, yeah, example yeah. of a date on Love is Blind. And she's through the wall. And the girl's like, okay, so Josh, if you could be a ice cream topping what would you be? And he's like, oh, I guess peanuts. Okay, my turn. Um, Like, if you were standing on a scale, like, what would it say? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's so true. Is anyone that ugly on the show? And I, the I know I asked this, like, not seeing it. And I will see it. If I we're gonna... will say that it is a show of sixes. Okay. Sixes and sevens. I like that. I'm surprised, based on my experience doing F-Boy Island, and like how many people are down to go on these shows and like want to be famous now and like that's really what these shows are about let's be honest like these people can say that they're looking for love and that can be true but it has to be hand in hand with like wanting to be famous too sure no one really goes on these shows being like i don't want to be famous why would you go on a show then so i cannot believe they couldn't find more attractive people no offense to unattractive people that deserve love as well I just can't believe it. <laughs> they do. Everyone deserves that love. That felt so but, sincere. But like you want to hang out with your nephew again. I, <laughs> like that was just, I just can't believe funny. they couldn't do a little bit. And I think all, all these people are like, there are beautiful people on this show. I, I'm saying this as a six myself. Like if I, I fit on the show perfectly. I'm just used to reality shows having super hot people. Anya, any thoughts? I don't know about rating people. I didn't even think about it, but you're right. They're not like. They're not bachelor they, it hot. It feels relatable. It feels like, oh, these are real people. Which but I'm also, grateful they for. seem like they've done makeovers on real people. Like, you know what I mean? Like, these girls have injections. Like, they're trying. They have had their hair done. Like, well, they're, they look these women very already TV ready. Have, no, no, no. These women are coming in with these injections. And I don't think... That's what I mean. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I thought you said they like, do makeovers on them. Oh, right. They've done makeover. Someone's done a makeover on them. Like, they've showed up on, on their best... They put their best foot forward. But they are, yeah. like, ordinary, real people. But yes. some of them are really cute, I think. I have to say, there's one girl whose face... She's beautiful. She's really beautiful. And um, it's interesting because I was looking at her face and I said to Chris when we were watching it, and I go, because we were like, she's clearly a, a stunner. But if you saw that face in 1998, 
you would say, what the fuck is going on there? It yes. doesn't. Beauty I now has changed about. so much. Faces of beautiful women. Beauty is, I mean, I know it's constantly changing what we, the idea of beauty, like whether it's like big hair in the 80s or like jeans that go up to your fucking, na- like, you know, breastbone or whatever it is. There's fashion that's changing what's sexy. But faces now, this woman, injections and faces have changed faces so much in our idea of what a good looking woman is. I watched an old episode of Oprah last night. That was called The Other Woman. It was all about these like women that were like the other woman in relationships where every woman in the audience is just like hating these women and Oprah is just like, so you knew he was married, right? You knew he was married <laughs> when you met him? Well, I didn't know. Okay, so, but then when you found out, see, I would think that if every man yeah. I ever dated ended up being married, I would like ask first the next time. And it's like, she's just calling him out and all these women are just like, just so angry at these women that are coming out being like, yeah, I was the other woman. There is a woman on there who looks legit 50 56 yeah and she's 36 years old and this was 2004 and it's because her it's because of fashion and what how much it's changed and like these women all have normal faces with nothing in them and it just doesn't happen anymore yeah it just it is as regular to get botox and stuff in your face now as it was to get like your hair dyed back in 2004 don't, it's just changed. Don't you think the premise, though, of a show where people get engaged after a couple times or whatever outside a fucking wall like that, that that doesn't do it for me. That makes it feel just like how the bachelor. I don't feel as genuine at the end when they getting. But at least they saw each other for a couple months like they get engaged, like straight up. But engaged. honestly, they know each other and fall in love. But like in these pods it is real love and as i know it's real love but not engaged love to fucking not see the person at all it's just not real watch the first two episodes and you tell me if what you've witnessed on the back i I saw the first episode i saw the first season i know but you need a refresher because this this stuff it's like it's real did anyone open the door was like god damn (laughs) there are yeah there are moments like that where like people have involuntary (laughs) reactions like where they're like (laughs) like, you just see a split second like oh fuck (laughs) can i pawn this ring oh my god we have to take a break but i want to come back and talk about one of those a bake (laughs) sale i gotta go to (laughs) while we go to break uh but we'll be right back because i want to talk about one of those reactions that was like uh uh-oh uh on this love is blind recap episode we'll get to the news i swear Andrew! Come on now! All right, we're back. Um, The one that I want to talk about from Love is Blind, the reaction, it's so funny because they they can't, people can't help their faces. Yes. Mm-hmm. And even yeah. these, even the ones with injections that are making their faces frozen, they can't help but like the way they touch the other person. You know when a couple is like very into each other because they're just like touchy, touchy, kissy, kissy, even though they've never even met before and they're engaged and they're in love and they're like, I love you. And then the ones that aren't, you just, you it's written all over them. But the other, the, the guy is usually the one that's like super into it and the girl is kind of like, ah. yeah. And um, they don't, the guy doesn't have the other couple's meetings to frame his meeting off of. So the awkwardness he just attributes to like, it's the first time we're meeting. She's just a little awkward. But watching it as a viewer, you're like, whoa, this is way different than the other ones. Something's wrong. And this one girl, she's like down to get engaged to this guy. And then as soon as she sees him, she's just like, I just feel like, my religion is going to be an issue. <laughs> it's like, wait, wait, what? I thought you said you wanted to work through that. And she's just like, I just feel like your height, like the height of my yeah. Um, yeah. love for God is like not in line with your knows. I mean, uh, he know God knows. Like, yeah, just, like yeah, she yeah, just, yeah. It's, it's That's so, so funny. funny. And the, the, the guy is in total denial of what oh, is yeah. going on, which is, She's not attracted to me and she doesn't like me because of my looks. And he goes, I think she just wanted to wait to see me in person before she told me like the deal breaker of our relationship. <laughs> it's like, oh, like no, he flipped dude. It. Yeah, yeah. That's not it. But it's sweet that he's like, you know, kind of defending it, it you know, in the, you know, you make excuses. I used to do that when guys would re- reject me. I'd be like, he likes me too much. Like he's, he loves me and he's scared 
of the love that he feels. And so he's running. So you just like kind of make yourself, I you, love it. You like know, make yourself like, feel better. Is about there it. a wall like to go? Like, <laughs> can we always have a wall in front of him? And like, I could love him through a wall. And while I'm fucking someone else on the other side. (laughs) Well, some of these couples are so connected in the pods and then they come out in the world and they are frozen and have nothing to talk about. And on the Japan one, it's funny because a couple of the girls, like after they get together and everything, they're like, can we just not look at each other? Because they stop actually having good conversations when they're physically with each other. I... And then they'll do this thing where they just look the other way and they start yeah. It's like dating online. Again. I'm not or kidding something. you. Like yeah. That happened with the, the, a couple on the American version. The Asian woman, Natalie, and like maybe it's a that maybe that's a, a thing I don't know but she is so loving to this guy behind the wall so effusive yes. with her feelings and then the second they get in person she's so mean to him constantly being she like starts nagging I, don't know, I guess constantly. you're all right nah. and all this guy wants is to be told he's cute and that she loves him and he's just like this big hunky like blonde guy who's just like he just wants to be loved that's all he wants and he and she just won't give it to him. She, he's like, "Do you?" Th-? He goes, "You're so, you're so beautiful, babe. Do you think I'm attractive?" And she's just like, "You're all right." Like, but she goes, "I'm just kidding." And he goes, yeah. "Stop, stop doing." Like, eventually, it like gets to a point where, and I'm screaming at the TV, like, "Stop being mean to him! You're why what? are you doing this? You were so <clears throat> nice. You're so nice." And she's so nice to him off ca- off camera. She's just gushing about how much she loves him. And then when they get in person, she's so mean. Anya, do you did think you she's see insecure? That? Like, that do you think was that so like interesting? Do you think, I think that when you get in front of someone, you're now thinking like, how do I look? How are they perceiving yes. me where you can't connect because you're so worried about thinking about yourself? There's something going on yeah. there that I just was Absolutely. really, she eventually worked through it, but it was. She was stunned by his good looks. He's really hunky. And that was the first thing she says to, in her one, uh, to the confessional. She's like, I couldn't believe how hot he is. <laughs> like, wow. Yeah. And, um. And then it's just like a con. I think it's subconscious. I wish they had a therapist element on the show mm. where they could deal with stuff like that. Like, yeah, what is going on with all of these little criticisms and jabs? Jokes? Like, constantly. Yeah. I used to deal with that in a relationship where it was like just constant, like, just cutting everything with a- any sincerity would be cut with a joke of like, it- where it was just, there was never a compliment that wasn't like, but. I mean, I guess you're okay. Like something that would take it away mm-hmm. as soon as they gave it or never give it and then, g- or, or say something mean and then cut it with like, I'm just kidding. You know, you're beautiful, you know, something like that. And I, it just got to the point where I was like, I, you're mean. You're constantly, mean. and I know you don't feel that way. Like when we're alone or when, you know, it, it, there's, I just know how you feel about me and isn't that, what it, what is going on here? And I think it's just fear of intimacy and fear of, being uh, vulnerable and like, I guess, letting someone know that you have something invested in them that they could then pull away. They were away. so mismatched, in my opinion. I was like, what? Um, I, I haven't sure gotten to the end, gonna... so please do not oh. tell me anything that happens. Sorry. But I thought they are, I think they're great. No, as I was watching, I'm like, they're a great couple, but it, I couldn't believe that they picked each other right off the bat or that, you know. I well, just he, thought for sure he was going to pick so the other so funny. Girl. There's so many moments in this reality show where I go, whoa, well, when this airs, he's going to have a lot to answer to because he yeah. just openly told this other girl because they're oh, all dating each other. Yeah. And by the end of it, some of them are between two people. And one guy tells one, and I'm not spoiling anything because this is the first episode. One guy tells a girl, hey, if I were to ask you to marry me, like, what do you think about that? He doesn't ask her, but he just says like, hey, I'm floating that. And she's like, I, I'm i I'm really into this other guy. And he's like devastated. So then he goes to the other girl on his, like his number two. He proposes to her, but, um, it, and she's like, I don't want to be this, your second choice. And she basically is. And he, he's honest with her about it, which I liked, but then there's, there's, then they get them all together. And so then they finally see the girl that they like went to first. Oh Yeah. And by that time, they've already started to have tension in their relationship. So this person yeah. just looks perfect <laughs> to them. Mm-hmm. And it's so juicy. And the show that Love fucking is Death would be amazing. Love because, is Death? Because there would be no oh, conversation. Death. death. Yeah, you just walk up and you're like, 
good tits. Like, like, <laughs> like Love is deaf is so funny. Because it would literally be a three second show. It'd be like, yeah, I'd fuck her. Well, I'd I fuck mean, that's him. what happens. That's pretty much any like yeah, loud yeah, bar. Yeah, Love is deaf is just a loud bar. <laughs> yeah, with how, tall, how, hot people all fucking. But that's was, what happens. It is interesting because you will get to a point in a relationship where your partner might find you. There's. I was talking to Chris about this because we were watching it and I go, it really looks should not, if you're looking to have like a partnership till the end where it's just one person, looks obviously are going to play a part in it, but you should wrap your head around dating someone who you're never, you're not going to find sexually attractive at all because you're, she's going to be an 80 year old woman someday. Bottom line, that's, you're not going to be one of 38. Oh, Andrew. (laughs) She's going to be 38 someday. <laughs> yeah. Not She's going to be 37 time, in 48 days. <laughs> She's and and I go cuz I said to Chris I was like I'm going to if we stay together. Yeah. I'm going to be 89 someday and you won't want to fuck an 89 year old. He goes, no "You're not going to want to fuck an 89 year old." I know, but I was just like thinking about <laughs> like know. men are more about like looks I think than women at no, and especially after menopause women but I think there's a difference between like I think if I'm aging with a woman and let's say like I want to put my best even though I haven't at times and I've gotten as ugly as I think I could get. I think there's something about like <laughs> trying to at least stay attractive for your partner. I know, where but like, at some point if, time takes its toll and there's nothing you can do is what I'm saying. I still see like an active old part like I'll see an active 80 year old woman who's like doing like you know. Roomba, and I'll be like, oh, that's fuckable. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Like, she's yeah, at least totally. like moving her body and like still being. Then you got like a 45 year old guy or girl who's just like eating fucking corn puffs, just sitting on the couch, like just letting themselves go because they're older. And it's just like, eh. yeah, that's not fuckable. But no. I think if you stay, like, yeah, but I'm just saying, like, I'm just saying that eventually looks will fade. I mean, yes, we all know yes. this. Looks will fade, and if you are invested in someone only because of the way they look, watch out because it's going to be a bumpy road. Because eventually you're going to feel and that that attraction you have in the beginning, where you're all over each other, is not sustainable. It just isn't, <laughs> and it just if you if that is what you think that you're going to have forever. I mean. Th- there's no, I don't, there's no one besides Courtney Kardashian and Travis Barker who have been able to keep that like intense all over each other, you know, fucking like rabbits vibe going for that long. You can have bouts, you can have little moments of it. Like when you return from a trip, you haven't seen each other in a while. You, they get a new haircut. There's like some, you go on vacation. You can have these moments of like little snippets of that again. But so do you think yeah. it helps Travis Barker and, I mean, they both have had kids on their own. They met. They're similar age. They've bo- both been through. I think it helps that they're in, in it, that online they, and that they get to like get attention for it. Yes, of course. That makes it. They they have like Wait, a boyer thing going on. How long have those guys been together? Yeah, they haven't been together. You know, that like long. six months. <laughs> That's but what still, I'm saying. So. I mean, Nikki's like, I can't believe they really managed to <laughs> yeah, keep the yeah, sparkle. No, I'm making a joke have. because obviously <laughs> okay. they're not gonna fucking. La- That's not gonna last. But this my point is, is like, do you but, think it's easier like? Do you think staying attracted to someone like let's say you meet someone when you're 23 and now they're 55 and you you know do you lose attraction to them when you're growing older with them or if you were 55 and you met another 55 year old it'd be easier to be like oh she's fucking hot does that make sense I think that no. you say tend to again. be attractive to the people huh? that are your like for for me at least as a woman like I I can be attracted to younger people for sure but I definitely think that Older people, I, I'm not attracted to until I get that age, generally, except for William Hurt, oh. which is the weirdest thing. <laughs> really? William Hurt was the. I was Big 13 chill. when I saw Michael, the movie where John Travolta was playing the angel. Oh, I and I was remember. horny for William Hurt. I don't understand it. I let me look what he looks. Oh like. my god, he just died yesterday. And then it turns out he also like beat Marley Matlin like terribly when he was pretty much Ike Turnering her their entire like four year relationship. It's <gasps> awful. Oh god. So. Whenever, if anyone's RIPing um, William Hurt, just add to it. Like, also he, like, really beat up uh, Marley Matlin all throughout their relationship, and his baby mama prior to Marley Matlin also used to get beat up by him all the time. 
Oh so, my God. Uh, well, listen, I'm not saying he's not name, a good actor. <laughs> oh Broadcast news was great, though. Oh my yeah. God. And Michael, though, he was just so gentle and sweet and I hot. love a disclaimer. And then, okay, let's talk about how good he is now. No, I mean, like, it's the separating the artist Allegedly. from the. It's like cigarettes will kill you and give you cancer, but God. I was watching they feel the Tina good. Turner documentary on Hulu, Tina, over the weekend. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And loved it. So good. But Ike Turner beat the shit out of her. We all know. Yeah. From the beginning, like, as soon as they started, like, dating. At first, she was just, like, an older brother type. Like, helping her along. And then all of a sudden, he decided, like, I'm changing your name to Tina Turner. And I own that name. I own you. I You know, when they divorced, she didn't have any rights to anything. And she got all of his, like, she is so amazing. Anyway, I was just watching it, and I go, what the fuck happened to Ike Turner when he was a baby, like, and a child? God only knows. Like, men who beat women, unfortunately, like, if you could, like, shrink them down to a little child that, like, what they witnessed and what led them to be that person, you would feel very sad for them. So as much as I'm, like, I hate, obviously, anyone who beats their, like, William Hurt, I'm just like, oh, some, something happened to him. So I have a little bit of empathy for fucking abusers. I don't think they're like, they should, like, obviously they should protect themselves from people and get help for what they're doing. And, like, a, that's that's up. Uh, um, there's no free will, so they don't really have a choice. But I just see, like, when I hear someone is, like, beating someone up, Ike Turner, I was just, I was kind of sad for him. As much as I was sad for Tina, I know that sounds crazy, but I was like, that poor guy, like, what the fuck happened to him that made him think beating women was the what if solution what nothing happened to him it's rare it's always some kind of trauma honestly no i know but i'm just saying i'm not like, kidding you i feel like sometimes like guys will use well i was hurt when i was three so I'm i could beat the shit you. out of this woman yeah. it's unless like, it's like not sociopathy a, it's not excusable it's not excusable but unless it's real sociopathy which is like where i let you know like there are some there's one serial killer who was truly raised well and like had a good family and it just doesn't make sense but generally much like on my 600 pound life if you look at people who abuse who yeah. abuse people abuse substances there is always always some trauma from childhood that is and on my 600 pound life i gotta say nearly every single time they start out and the person like they show their life and they're like how much they eat and what their daily like schedule is and like their enablers getting them food and then the music starts going ding 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 and then the pictures of their childhood and then you find out when they were molested every mm -hmm. single time every time it's it's uh, so the correlation is there's just no there's just no denying it it'd be funny like a like a parents like oh no we didn't hurt them we just trained them to be a serial killer like like they were like, yeah, all right, just, sit down, Tommy. We're going to show you what a knife and a gun is. There might be people like my mom just listened to a lot of murder podcasts. Like yeah. there's going to be a new batch of serial killers. <laughs> yeah, of like yeah, I just grew up like, what hearing was the about it. Yeah, yeah. I just like was no. taught it. I just listened to <laughs> Morbid in the car with my mom on the way to school. Uh, shots fired. Shots fired. All right, break, um, I think. Yeah, uh, break already? Did you uh, I saw a I sign. can't see. Sorry. No. Oh, news. Yeah. Yeah. I thought you had good eyes. I did. <laughs> That's why I said break. A break before news. I think we just go into news. Yeah. yeah Are I you saw. new to the show? Huh? <laughs> what show? First, first time here? First time without curls. <laughs> All right. Uh, news. Let's get to the news. You heard it here first. You first. Yeah, you heard it here first. Oh, man. It's Monday, folks. You know what that means. It is Monday. Hope you're having all the swells out there. We sure did this weekend. It was a very nice 68 and sunny here in St. Louis uh, for one day. And it was before 12 that, it was degrees on Saturday, 68 on Sunday. It hey, was nuts. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Noah, take it away. All right. Anya Marina is playing Rockwood Music Hall on March 17th, starting 7 p.m. This well, just why do in. I care? <laughs> <laughs> That's the name of a segment, Anya. Just yeah, yeah. Like, like, not being a piece of shit. Um, I'm just playing. Also, no, go. It will be amazing. She's Anya incredible. Marina and Andrew Collin will be performing with Nikki Glaser on tour. On uh, you know, we start up <laughs> very soon. Winnipeg, Vancouver, Austin, Texas, Jacksonville, Florida, 
so i mean uh, endless pennsylvania so many dates um <laughs> Go check out those uh, dates at NikkiGlazer.com. And, and where can they get tickets for your show, Anya, on your website? Uh, or just AnyaMarina.com. Okay. Lots Dope. of good stuff there. All right. All right. I'm going to skip to What's the next? second story just so we can um, move Ooh. things along. Because I want to know if you've ever thought about this. A study found hmm. that when entering an elevator, people stood in each corner just by human nature. Hmm. You know what I, it makes me think of? If you're a guy and you there's three urinals, you're going <laughs> to not pick the middle urinal. Because it's almost like picking the middle seat of a flight. Because you're, yeah. you're going to yes. end up next to someone if someone else comes in. Yeah, you don't want Yeah, you don't want to mm. see. Someone, I once read that like if you get on an elevator, how funny it would be to just face the way you walked in. Oh like why God. do we have to? You I know? wouldn't get on that elevator. <laughs> how weird it would be. It would be <laughs> like a, a Hotel Cecil. Yeah. That is a serial killer. Yeah. <laughs> that is wild. Um, yeah, elica- elevator etiquette. Elicate. Yes. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you pick a corner because you also just don't want to be creepy and stand too close to someone. And, um, do you like standing by the You buttons? just kind of face forward. Are you one of those people? Do you, are you, do you prefer to stand in the corner where the buttons are? She can help push them for people. Uh, oh. We got buttons on both sides. Oh, okay. um, what am I, six? I like pushing my buttons myself. I hate when someone's like, what floor? And I'm like, I yeah. get it. I get, I get it. it. <laughs> yeah, what floor? And then they, do, they always, there's a pause there where they want to be treated like a king for doing it. So it's, <laughs> it's like you hit one, fuck, you hit 11. Like, stop. Like, and you had fun doing it. You like seeing it light up. Anya, where do you Man. stand when you walk in? If no one's in the elevator, of course I go to the buttons. If one person's in the elevator close to the buttons, I go far away from them. Are you if afraid of people? Middle, Is there a fear in an elevator? Like, as a woman, like, dep- especially if it's like 30 floors, like, do the floors amount to more fear? Like, the slower the elevator, the older the elevator? Like, what's the. I, Why I would as a feel- woman? Just because, uh, like, if a guy comes on and you're a, a, a oh, woman. Oh, I thought a, you meant, like, a rickety elevator. Oh, no, but. no, no. I just mean, like, like being in there with a, with a guy that you don't know, a stranger. Um, mm, You know, it depends on, like, the vibe they're giving off. Yeah, I'm going to, like, I'll just get off on a, I would just protect myself and get off on a, even if I press, like, floor 70 and the guy's a creep, uh-huh. I, I would press a, a, a floor right away to get off. <laughs> Um, oh, good one, Glazer. Yeah, and then just go. Oh, I forgot. Like, and I wouldn't even make an excuse. I'd just be like, "You're creepy." Like, I owning when a guy is creeping you out is oh. a good thing to do. The other night, I was walking Luigi, and it was at night, and this guy came out of nowhere. Run! I heard first of all, I heard running first, oh, oh and before you get attacked as a woman, generally the guy's gonna just. Just you know, like a like a jaguar stalking. They are slow, and then it's and then it's fast. I mean, it's gonna be like four four like, and then it's they're gonna get you. And so he came out of nowhere running, and I just go, oh my god! Like I screamed, like he was about to attack me. He was like, oh, I'm so sorry. He was running back into. He forgot his phone in a restaurant, so he was just you know like when you're just sort of like fuck, oh I forgot my, my phone. And he was like, and I go, you can't run when you're a man at night. You can't. Don't run ever. He's like, I forgot this steak knife. I brought it from the restaurant. Oh, I'm my, telling oh you. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Men need to like so- lay <laughs> off of running around <laughs> women running. at night. It's so scary. Yeah, no, I, I'd be scared too. It was not good. But in the elevator the other day, I find that when I have Luigi, because usually I'm just taking him out for a walk, um, he becomes the topic of conversation, and people go. Oh, and Luigi starts to like smell them, and I'm trying to like pull him away because he just wants, wants to smell their shoe. And they often go, "He's so cute," and I go, "Thanks." And then my my line is, "I birthed him," because <laughs> it's like what, <laughs> it's not my responsibility it. that he's cute. Like I go, "Thanks," like I have some kind of say in it. You're like I can see that. I yeah. see it. I can see it in yeah. your fangs. Uh, n- next story. A student interrupts her online class as she starts venting about a breakup over three minutes. Other students <laughs> tried to warn her in the chat that she was not muted, and everyone was confused why the teacher didn't mute her. She was um, also going... So is she talking to someone else? Yeah, so I think what happened, basically, because one of the other students posted this on TikTok, of course, and um, I think she probably like 
picked up a phone call, thought she muted her class, and she started telling her mm. friend about the breakup. She also talked about how she drove her car the wrong way down a one-way road <laughs> for like over three minutes. <laughs> Reminds me of oh like Robert Durst of how he found out yeah. he's a murderer. Yeah. <laughs> that teacher sucks. Oh, he's like in defense idiot. of the teacher. <laughs> the teacher did offer to stay. You broke up with stay, him. Um, after class, and some people were saying like maybe the teacher didn't know how to mute the student on the program. Well, this, the teacher could have just cut in and said, "Hey, you're you're," but I think there's sometimes teachers just you know the teacher that you're doing something embarrassing or you're talking and they just stay silent and wait for you to be embarrassed or something like so that the whole they just kind of like play with the idea that they can kind of humiliate Control you things. yeah i think it's i don't like this what teacher if, i think they should have interrupted what if, because they have the what power if the girl turned the volume of the class down and couldn't hear people like hey put your mute back on yeah okay maybe you don't have the whole story um also if i were that teacher i would have let it run too <laughs> Well, there's something funny about. <laughs> I would have been fascinated. There's something funny about her turning down her teacher because she's like, Ugh, I don't want to learn about yes. biology. Meanwhile, he's telling her that she's giving yes. away her secrets, but she. So who's at fault there? The girl that already turned down the teacher. No, it's that no. The girl is. Yeah, 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 the girl is. I mean, what's the most embarrassing thing you guys have done on a like? Have you guys have seen anything embarrassing? Done anything embarrassing on a Zoom? I mean, I just remember teachers going out of being out of line with me in person but you have you seen anything on zoom where someone thought they were muted I, and they did I, something yes. embarrassing yeah really? what, just, what have you seen i was just on a zoom where somebody was like so grateful like talking about how grateful they were that their partner got them a dozen roses on valentine's day and they were like i just thought it was really sweet and like a surprise and then out of nowhere you hear someone go I'd like to order a dozen roses, <laughs> and they're making a phone call. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, Wait. like someone got like the idea had, yes. from the girl. <laughs> and loudly, and no one muted them, and they were like, yes, one dozen roses. It's a delivery. <laughs> oh, my God, that's I'd hilarious. Like it today. Was everyone laughing? <laughs> it was awkward, yeah. That is no, so a, funny. It's funny when people don't know how to mute, and it just they're scrambling, and you're like, just make me a co-host so I can do this. Yeah, that was that was recent. Noah, what did you so witness? Mine wasn't um, something that someone said, but the program that we were using, it put this one guy up on like the first page. And um, mm -hmm. all of a sudden I noticed him like picking his ear and then like looking at it and like rolling it around and then like <laughs> pulling oh, his no. eyebrow <laughs> thing, going back into his ear. <laughs> like just, I guess he, I don't know if he just is comfortable or if he if he just right. forgot or didn't think that anyone could see him. I don't know. I feel like yes, we should keep all that stuff to ourselves, but who does not pick their nose, by the way? Who the fuck doesn't pick I, I don't who is someone who would never pick I, I understand not doing it in front of people and like trying to be but to act like you don't pick your nose, what do you do when you have a booger up there? Just blow I always it with a blow tissue. My nose with a Come tissue. on. I got yeah. caught picking my nose on Perfect Strangers. Really? And yeah. I might have ate it. I don't know. There's he a... ate it. <gasps> I, don't, I wasn't going to bring it up, but I'm glad <laughs> no, that you shared I it with like us. I felt like you were foreshad or leaning in. I wasn't going to say it. I really wasn't. <laughs> that I'm was your kid, story But to I'm tell. kidding, though. <laughs> I really was not. I told you I wasn't going to ever share that. <laughs> but you share everything strange. around it. That You know I can't hold myself. I mean, I love that no, you're sharing it, I'm but like, like yeah, victim. we I'm had. Like, um, how dare you make me say this? I really wasn't gonna say it because I just, I just felt like we. There is a video of Andrew looking out of a window during a writers' meeting. Maybe there might yeah, allegedly, allegedly there's a video out of there. me looking out on a ledge. Picking and my nose. Picking his nose and then eating it. And this was during a writers' meeting, the final writers' meeting of Perfect Strangers. And um, I love in the video because you can hear me furiously typing like, like you know, we were supposed to do right at that moment. <laughs> and, he and, he break. and he ate it. He did it twice, actually. No, in the video. it was one eat, one second pick. Oh, I Thank think it was you. eating both times. You like you stopped at your and mouth by the both way, times. Can we stop using the word eating? It's it was more tasting. of a tasting. It's a <laughs> and eating it makes out? it seem like I got a bowl of boogers. I don't have no, a bowl. Tasting. 
I, it was the tasting one, is it, like a wine tasting where you like pick your boogers and then swish them around your mouth and spit them out. Yeah. Oh, there are too are much oak that? in my boogers. No. <laughs> also, when you bite, you bite I'm, your nails. I'm you cons- bite your on. booger. I just want to ask. You bite your. Though, bo- you don't eat your nails. I am not judging. I swear to God, I'm not judging. Have you ever ate a booger? Never. Oh, really? Come on. I, you know I would admit that. I know. I, no, I don't care. I just. You karate chop your shit. It oh. just it I, no. I'll karate chop my shit for okay, sure. Shit, I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I no, I I would glad. I was because we were gonna, talking about it that day. Yeah, yeah. I <laughs> I will touch my own poop to like karate chop it, but then I wash my hand off. But I didn't. I don't eat it. Wait, why did you karate chop it the other? Because day? it wasn't going down. <laughs> what? And I just didn't want to make. There wasn't any utensil plunger. There was only a brush, and I didn't want the brush to have like shit on it. So I just put my hand and I chopped it in half <laughs> with my fingers, and then I went to the sink and I scrubbed my fingers like I, you know, like I was trying to scrape off the skin. I got it, and I kept smelling them after I dry mm-hmm. it and do it again, you know, just to make sure. Got underneath the nails with the paper towel, everything, and um, and it was fine. I mean, seeing floaters, I was laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just imagining I mean, you going, yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> how many things, how many hits did it take? Just one. It was just like maybe one or two stabs. Have you ever ate a booger right on down. you? Be honest. Oh yeah, but I yes! lost the taste for them after ten years <laughs> oh. old, I think, and I wonder why now. But I would eat One's- pieces of skin that I pick off. Oh yeah, I love pieces of skin. Oh my god, I mean, it's what so are weird boogers? Too. What are dust boogers? and snot, mucus? It's your body's dis- defense to you know, it's it's like pus. So it is like eating your own skin. It's your body. Yeah. I would eat a scab, yeah. too. I'd probably eat a I scab. I love eating scabs. scabs. One time my tongue fell off and I ate that. Wait, 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 We got to go to break. We're wait, coming back. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Cliffhanger. Columbine and Anya's tongue. <laughs> we'll be right back and we'll learn about Columbine. We have a great details about that coming up that you've never heard of. And then also when to- Anya ate her tongue i believe i know the story but it's a good one and i can't wait to hear it again all right we're back anya tell us what you mean when you say i ate my tongue okay i was in moscow russia at a museum with my family and i had a sore throat and my mom was like oh you need to suck on a vitamin c and she pulls she has vitamins in her purse and we're walking around this museum and she hands me like a horse pill sized vitamin C, like something that you swallow. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is not a chewable. This is, and she goes, no, no, no. You put it on your tongue and just slowly suck on it very slowly. And it's like, it, you will have no sore, th- no, no sore throat within an hour or two. And I was like, all right. So I listened to my mom. I put it on my tongue. I'm walking around the museum very slowly for an hour sucking on this thing. <laughs> Not wildly sucking on it, just normal, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, I feel weird. And I go in the bathroom an hour later and I look at my tongue and I'm like, what the fuck? And there is the exact shape of this horse pill on my tongue. The pill's now gone, it's dissolved. And it's just a white thing on my tongue. And I'm like, what is that? And I touch it and it lifts off. And it's a huge chunk of my tongue that has detached. Are you gushing blood? No blood. It's just Whoa, super red weirder. under it. Yeah, it like dissolved the top layer of my tongue. I'm th- I'm saying like Ugh. like three I, like, getting- like a tablet. three or four millimeter millimeters, like a lot. Yes. And I and then I'm like, what the fuck? And then I'm fascinated by it because it's almost the size of a tablet. And then I somehow detach it and I'm holding a piece of my tongue and I just go, oh, my fucking God. And then I ate it. It was like involuntary. (laughs) I just could not eat it. It was so weird. And then I walked out of the bathroom. I told my sister, I go, dude, part of my tongue just fell off and I ate it. And I stuck my tongue out and she could not stop laughing. She's like, what the fuck? There's a huge hole in your tongue. Could you like keep pennies in it? Like, could you keep like a stack of three pennies in the hole perfectly? Would it like fill it up? You could put an ear pod in it almost. Oh my God. Definitely like this whole part of an ear pod. What? Yeah. Yeah. And then it grew grew back. I wonder if it rejuvenated like in your cells, like, and then went right to your tongue. I know. What is it about like wanting to eat things? Like, like having a craving. Last night, I, um, I was craving pickles. So there's just times where I just want 
pepperoncinis. Like I could eat an entire jar of those or pickles, you know? And so I Googled it to see like, what does it mean when you're craving pickles? And it means you're thirsty. It means you're, you know, dehydrated and you need to drink more water. Why don't I crave water when I'm dehydrated? Like <laughs> why pickles then? Like there's got to be something else. And it's, you want sodium when you're really. There's electrolytes in them too. Yeah, but it just doesn't make sense to me why you would want pickles. But I just got, I can, I just ate an entire jar of pickles. It was so freaking good. Do you think if you chugged water, you would still want pickles? I think you kind of would. Everyone I think it would says, satiate just drink it. a glass of water and it's like. I think you'd want them less. I do. I do yeah. believe after reading that. Yeah, but there's just sometimes where I'm just like craving a certain food. And I'm like, what's going on here? Brenna bought well, Girl Scout mad- cookies, and it's like, what's your favorite Girl Scout cookie? Oh mm-hmm. my god! Uh, uh, oh, that Samoas. could be a top one, bottom Samoas, one. Samoas, a hundred percent. Samoas. Yeah, I got into this. Co- this was an elevator conversation I had with a, a two women the <laughs> other day. I go, are we talking Girl Scout cookies? So she goes, I hate coconut. I will not eat coconut. And the other girl was like, I love. And I was like, is this Girl Scout talk? I was like, yeah, I love a Samoa. <laughs> Purple box. Wait, Samoa is what's in a Samoa? Is that the coconut? Yeah, no. those are the ones that are like rings. And, yes. But they have coconut and then chocolate drizzle yes, on top. And they're like brown, yes. like toasted. Oh, those my are very God. Good. Oh. She had Thin Mints and the peanut butter. I like Thin which, Mints. Thin Mint in a freezer. There's a hard yes. thing. That's, oh. On Jesus. top of ice cream. I do like thin mints, but it's not like I'm I'm not right now. I'd rather just have like a really warm chocolate chip cookie. Like they're not better than anything yeah. else that I would be know. decadent. I think a lot of people are are and the peanut butter cookie is fucking so they're the in one our with house. the chocolate and then the peanut butter yeah. inside. Oh yeah. Those I've never had those because I used to hate peanut butter as a kid, but I bet they're really good. I've I mean, never I'm had those either. Obsessed. Obsessed. Um, I can't not go I I'm I'm doing pretty, whatever, doing pretty good. Like, I'm being, like, in shape and eating well and what all that's. And then around 10.30 p.m., I just, they just start talking to me, the yeah. cookies. I could hear them. I'm not even kidding. Sugar is insanely yeah. addictive. Yeah. yeah it's, there's yeah. just no question about it. But it's I think, addict- I wonder if they're not, addictive. if they weren't in the house, would I still have, knowing that they're that close? It's just yeah, like, Yeah, that's hey, a problem. But I also, you know, but it's also I deserve like, it. It's fine. Yeah, you got to live a little because if you don't, the second you get around something, <laughs> you're going to go fucking wild. Uh, it's you know, always and, struck me as wild that you don't, Nikki, you don't really have a big sweet tooth. Like, are you kidding? Never... I have the biggest. I I lived on candy as a kid. Sweet. I'd go to the sweet factory in the mall, spend seven dollars, which back in nineteen ninety six is a mall. fucking yeah. ton of money to spend on candy, and I would just get, you know, the uh, gummy bottle caps, the gummy gummy peach rings, gummy mm. watermelons, uh, uh, chocolate covered gummy bears, uh, nerds, nerds. I mean, I I love I love I love sugar. I just don't let myself have it because I just can't control myself around it. It's just not worth so it. It's just the it same the as alcohol either. and and um oh no I bought um there's this thing smart sweets that I really like that are like lower sugar and I have those sometimes but I find that if you don't have it you don't crave it. Yes. Yeah, definitely. You know? Uh, it's like the same with um you know alcohol and, and weed. Like I love it. I definitely like want it all the time when I'm having it, but if I don't have it, I just kind of it's just, I just put it in the category of like, it's just off limits to me. I just can't, it doesn't make me feel, it makes me feel insane. You know? I feel like with drinking, like sugar could honestly be more of an addiction than drinking. Just because like, y- you could just eat sugar and it's like, it's not that big of a, but an alcohol like to me is like an event. There's an immediate or, effect of alcohol too. There is an immediate it, effect? Yeah, I mean yeah. like you get yes. drunk and you say stupid things and. I know, but I'm just thinking of like, when I would drink, it wouldn't be like, oh, no, I'm just going to try to get one in before I go to bed. You know, it's like it, it would be like for a thing. Yeah. So like when I have alcohol in the house, it doesn't call my name as much as mm. a fucking Thin Mint would. Right. I'm it's the different. same. It's funny. Yeah. I'm writing a song right now called Give Me Sugar. And it's all about that. It's about how like, well, I used to drink. I used to smoke. So like, just give me some sugar. That's all mm. I want. Like, I used to do all these other things. But sugar is like my last thing. And it's just like a desperate song from the point of view of a total addict. And it's really fun. I love right? that. I love that. And you can hear it at Rockwood at 7 p.m. This- yes, on Thursday night. <laughs> yeah. Nice promo. Thanks, <laughs> if you're reading the book club of the the, the week for the besties, um, besties book club that we announced on the 
well, I'm on, on our Instagram. It's called Talking with Strangers. Or talking to strangers, talking two, with stra- two. talking to strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. There, I just read chapter nine last night, and it's all about alcohol. And it really opened my eyes to some things about alcohol that I did not know. And I'm excited to discuss them when we all um, read that book well, together. We're we gonna do that Thursday because I'm gonna have to. Read no, we're probably gonna do it later oh. after after the break, the season two break. But um, we have two episodes for you this week, so it's gonna be this one and also uh, tomorrow. But uh, b- b- f- on, it's Monday, so you know what that means. Top one, bottom one. Let's do it. The category today is... Bad words. Bad words. Your favorite bad word, your least favorite bad word. And I'm going to eliminate the obvious worst bad word. That The C word. The C word? No. The N word? Yes. Is that because oh. that's obviously the worst. That is a bad word, worst. but that's not even a word I would like right. put in with bad words. Are you know what I mean? Allowed? Well, bad word. It's bad. Is it, it is not very, bad? Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yes, it's a bad word. It would get but bleeped I'm, on TV if, yes. even if, uh, you know, who, no matter who said it. It's not seven that George Carlin would say, right? Sure. But okay, so yeah. bad words, just anything <laughs> that would make a kid go like, that's bad. You yes, know? yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'm just gonna remove the N words because I just don't want to get like, okay, you actually think motherfuckers worse than the N word? Yeah, right. yeah. Obviously, the N word trumps all, yes. um, as do any slurs. So let's start with bad because we always do that. Anya, what is your least favorite curse word? I'm, if slurs are allowed, no, this, they're not. Oh, they're not. Um, I would say like racial slurs are not allowed. Okay, okay. Because well, they takes, should all be just like obviously the terrible. The fun out of it. Yeah, yeah, there goes the your fun. there goes your favorite. Yeah. <laughs> there goes my best. <laughs> I don't like it when a guy says a girl's a bitch or like a a slut maybe. I'll, I'll, but when a girl does, I don't know why when a guy does it I'm like, "All right." Or I guess the obvious one is the C word. Um, is it? Because I love the C word, but um, okay. We can say cunt, guys. What are we doing here? No, I know. (laughs) (laughs) Bitch is, so you're you're framing it like it when men say it. Or what about if a woman called you a bitch? It's, I guess, uh, if it's in a hateful sense of a guy being like, she's such a fucking slut. Yeah, I think we're thinking of this as, well, I guess it could be. Okay, yes. Context of like what it is. Yes, it's funny. That's a different thing. But if they really mean it. I'm kind of like, ugh, it's a turn off. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's a, it's a mean word, but I feel like any word, that one's your least favorite of all the things that a man could call a woman? Yeah. Slut over cunt over bitch? Yeah, I think so. My mom oh, never... Sorry, I'm going to say bitch because I did get into a huge fight with a, an ex about, he whispered, you're a bitch in my ear Oof. really quietly. And we had a huge fight. Oh, and that was, and I remember so like, oh, he's like, whispering. you're a fucking Ugh. bitch. Because <gasps> he was talking about how much he loved this Jackson Brown song. And I was like, didn't he like abuse Daryl Hannah? And we got into some fight about that. And then he whispered in my ear. You're a fucking bitch. And he left. Oh and then we God. had a huge fight. And then we broke up. What's that? I think that was the worst thing I ever heard. And then you beat so him that. with a two liter of water? Uh, it was a gallon of water. I did beat him. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I know that story. <laughs> <laughs> what Jackson Brown song? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I can't um, even know. I, these days? Was it? So, <laughs> bitch for me, though, <laughs> I used to, sometimes I'd want to call my mom a bitch because for obvious reasons teenage angst she was one adult you know? angst too yeah adult angst as well <laughs> but teenage angst that's still <laughs> permeates my adulthood um my mom nothing would set her off more than calling her but it was the number obviously you know but like in a way that i've never seen my mom so angry you know like it, it turned I her say, into a bitch it would be because guess what uh, I remember someone saying this about some woman and they were like, you know, I called her crazy once. And you know who hates being called crazy? Crazy people. (laughs) And so honestly, my mom, when she would be this, my sister and I talked about it the other day and we were saying how, um, how we were remembering how like calling my mom a bitch would be like the worst thing ever. And I remember just switching it to B. I would be like, you're being a B right now because it was just such, it would just set her off and make her so she couldn't, you you wouldn't even, she couldn't function if you, you, it would just, 
it would take an, a, an, an argument from a place of like getting things out and like kind of accomplishing your anger to like just no just unbridled anger and um my sister said it's i it's weird that mom hated that word because she could call us <laughs> all the time <laughs> we got called bitches all the time both lovingly and uh, in in anger but calling my mom that i it just was it was a it was i don't know why she hated that word so much because i've never really hated being called a bitch i think i'd rather be called a bitch by my kid than when they start calling you by your real name calling a man a bitch is such yeah. a different meaning but you know what i mean that, oh you're uh, like andrew todd oh uh, if my kid was like okay andrew oh god yeah that kid is getting a whooping but not nice whooping <laughs> But isn't a, it interesting? A stern talking to. Calling a woman a bitch versus calling a man a bitch. Very different. Very different kind of bitches. It's like... Uh, well, uh, calling a man a bitch is saying he's a woman. <laughs> or like... Yeah. It's saying he's be- weak. Whereas feminine. calling a woman yeah. a bitch is almost like you're too strong. Like yeah. tone it down. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Why does that... So um, my least favorite one is probably when men say titties. Ugh. It's just Thank disgusting you. to me. Like her titties. Um it just grosses me out. I don't want to I wish it. I had said that. I don't like that word. I don't think men should use that word. Um what about I like tits? tits is fine. Boobs, breasts, I'm gonna add also, but breasts isn't a bad word. But breasts is almost more disgusting than titties. Um I don't want like some the other day this guy was miking me on set for Perfect Strangers too and uh, he was like uh, and you could just tuck the wire beneath your breast and I was like oh god oh, I thought he I said to titties. call HR I thought he was going to say no, I would prefer him to <laughs> It was just so like ugh I just didn't like it um so I'm going to go with titties Andrew what's your least favorite My least favorite I I'm I'm kind of I think steering a little bit away from it but I think this will make you angry too it's when someone writes on Instagram or Facebook and they spell shit or fuck and they just take one letter and make it the the whatever. Right, right. They put no. an exclamation mark for the or, I and shit. Or like that other thing that I don't know. The what at that. sign or the, the asterisk. Yeah, an mm-hmm. asterisk instead to feel like that they're like a better person. Oh, so they're, oh, because they spell S H asterisk T. Yes. Some people do it on TikTok because, so it doesn't get flagged. I get that. Yes. I don't think it's, it doesn't bother me. I, really? I understand trying to keep your, like, keep it clean for the kids. I know that it's just, like, the same thing. Because I have a shirt that says, like, fuck factory farming. And I would not wear it if it said the word fuck, but it says F, you know, uh, mm-hmm. asterisk C K. And it just is that way. I can wear that it out and not you really in your mind. I don't. To me, it just. Makes I know it it's. Like, I know it's the same, but it's just like it's just. I there's something about seeing the word fuck that is a lot more intense. If it doesn't have that, it <laughs> softens it in a way for me at least. To me, it hardens. To me, I'm like I pay more attention to it. And I go, oh fuck. No. Like, what's yeah. your least favorite? <laughs> My least favorite uh, is idiot. Calling someone an idiot because I think it's like mm. not empathetic at all. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it is mean yeah. when I when I sometimes slip and say it I it it like it leaves a taste in my mouth like I'm just like ooh that wasn't that was it just feels so it's, it's, it's so, so mean. mean and like you just don't yeah, consider agree. the person's background and it's like the complete lack of empathy <laughs> I just think so that's my least favorite it yeah. also negates anything they say it's like a way to be like you're just an it's idiot dismissive. like then it's like okay well now Yes, yeah, saying it may be like you idiot is a little bit more loving, but being like you're such a fucking idiot, like that is oof. fucking idiot though is really fun. Uh, like I, calling <laughs> yourself a fucking idiot is funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fucking idiot. I'm a dumb fucking idiot. Although those words matter, I know that you think they d- you don't they don't when someone like says bad things to yourself. I used to think it didn't matter, but if you like say if you speak to a plant and call it a fucking idiot or a glass of water, they've done like studies like language and like talk like i used to think that you could just say to your dog like if it was like in a nice tone like you're a fucking idiot you're a dumb little piece of shit that it wouldn't matter but they realize that animals actually know what you're saying oh so even if you do it in a tone it could hurt his feelings so i only i never do that to luigi anymore. i used to think it was really funny to just say mean things in yeah. like a cute voice and now i don't do it i always say i love you i love you so much i love you and i was just kidding and I only say nice things now. 
but it used to be like a bit I did. But now I know that dogs actually understand the difference Sarcasm. between. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do, you know, they're that all like great the dogs in New York are cartoons. <laughs> okay, let's go to final thought and go through our favorite. Yeah. Anya, favorite bad word. Oh, you know what? My my friend Bob is German, and I never knew how to say shit in German, but it's Scheiße. And he says this mm. thing, and I say it all the time whenever he's you know stubs his toe or whatever. He always goes Scheiße, Manelli, <laughs> and I say it all the time. And it's oh, my that's favorite. fun. Ooh. Oh, that is fun. Um, wait, what was that one? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That you taught me the uh, Russian word. Ujus. 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 And it means what? Horrible. Ooh, I love that word, but that's not mine. Mine, but um, that one's a good one. Like Shiza Minnelli is fun. Little, yeah, I do like a um, a jokey kind of like fudge sickle, whatever it is, like that you say. Like, um, I'm trying to think of a good one, but I can't right now. Man, I heard some funny. I was listening to an interview with. I'm becoming. A, I'm coming. Becoming like obsessed. I have a new obsession. Phoebe Bridgers. The musician and I'm I'm kind of like consuming everything about her right now because I'm just like into it and she was talking about she was doing this Rolling Stone interview and she just kept dropping all of these like jargon like just kind of like fun words and she said um uh when when you're out in public and you get recognized when you're like an indie uh, artist or like it's called recognized which I liked Mm -hmm. And then she also said that me and, you know, me and Connor Oberst were torbiting for a while, which is like when you're on tour and you like sometimes are in the same city. Yeah. I liked that a lot, too. I like she, words like that. She's a good writer. Yeah, she's good. It's it's good stuff. Um, OK, my favorite one is probably is, is probably cunt. I like it because it just packs it packs a punch. It I don't I think it's kind of like it's so aggressive that I feel like it takes I would never really call someone a cunt, I don't think. Um, I just, it just uh, feels crunchy. I like it. I would never use it to describe my actual vagina. You know? Yeah, yeah that would be as creepy as titties. <laughs> yeah, that would be really, that would be off. I just think, a harsh word for Yeah, that sounds pussy. like what a, how a rapist calls a vagina. <laughs> um, like, I think I have a UTI in my cunt. It's yeah. just a lot. It's like, <laughs> it's so it funny. It's like it, all of a sudden an Anais Nin novel. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny to think of a doctor just being like, so your cunt, um, can we talk <laughs> oh, about God. your cunt? Like, just yeah, like a sexual. medical term. Like, I would love that doctor. I think it'd be hilarious. Yeah. Like, oh, dick is my favorite word. I like the word dick too a lot. It, Cock it is, is great in a sexual context. I just love dick. <laughs> uh, like, he's a dick. Let me suck your dick. I, I just like it. I, I think it just it's another crunchy word, and it just covers a lot. Any bad word that you could use multiple different ways. It's just so versatile. Yeah. Um. I, I mean, remember the first time I said fuck. I was 16. I had never what? sworn before. I was kind of a goody two shoes and I was driving alone and it hit me on the drive. No one is in this car. I can say whatever I want. Oh my God, I could say the F word. And I was like, are you ready to say this? I don't know if you could say you this. You had never said I had never the F said word. it. No, it's kind of interesting. Even, I feel like we should all remember like, the first time we say it. When I was 11, I remember my friends would make fun of me because I would spell out sex. I'd be like, so wait, have they had S-E-X? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And then I drove home and I could not, once I said fuck once, it was like, I could not stop. I was like, fuck, fucking motherfucker. It was so fun That's and such freeing. A good word. And it was like I never stopped for the rest of my life. It's the best. I remember saying yeah. one time I was watching, or I, my parents were talking about someone and I was like, God, he's such a prick. And I was like, fourth grade and they were like you do not where did you get that from it's like where do you think full house you you pricks that's where i got it from like, <laughs> you pricks <laughs> fucking prick Woo. That's, Woo. that's a good one all right what's your fave fuck yeah just fuck i mean fuck yeah. is just <laughs> it just it's the best word. It's it so, really, it, you could do so much with and it. And comedically, it is just a, it's a little sprinkle of ev it's like a everything uh, uh, what's the bagel. Everything. Yeah, like the the you know the, spr the what is it? The seasoning. There it's like a thing. seasoning to any joke. You put in fucks and it's you know the classic th thing of like if you're a comedian and you're trying out new material, put 
put fuck all over the joke and it's going to get more laughs. And then as it becomes enough to support itself, funny enough, take the fucks out and see if it's still funny. And then you'll know if you have a good joke. But do you feel though that like with like taking it out and then it's a good joke, then if you realize, oh, it could be funny without it, but you kind of just like saying it because that's how you would. Yeah. Tell a story anyways. I don't think you need to take it out. I'm just saying, like, yeah. a joke should be able to, I think, stand without it. Unless it's, you know. I just love a story that feels like you're excited to tell it. And I yes. think sometimes a fuck be like, and then he fucking, like, was, like, it's a placeholder Same for, with like. the word like. Like, uh, I could take it out, but it doesn't sound conversational. That's not how I talk. Yeah, yeah. Without saying likes. So, you can leave it in. Because I, I, I did a set this past weekend. Oh, yeah. And something happened to me on the way to the venue. And I opened with a story about... You always do that, yes. And it was so fun. But I, I did say fuck a lot because I was still heated about what yes. happened. <laughs> this guy cut me off. And it's it was a, and he, this guy in a Dodge Charger, he fucking cut... No, but he cut me off. And uh, he's the one with the, t the tinted windows, you know? like So you don't know what's in there, but... It, you know, a Dodge Charger comes with a gun package, whatever. Yes. I don't want to do the whole joke. But I was so nervous about yelling at the guy because he had tinted windows and I didn't know. What yeah. It, but I was like, I want to kill him. Like, he cut me off in a way where, like, he planned it. Like, mm -hmm. it was bad. It was really bad. Like, I almost You crashed. know what you should do is just slow down and not deal with it and not... Because that person, of course, like, they're of cutting course. you off on purpose. Come on, Andrew. <laughs> of course. Do you have your girlfriend in the car? No, I had my fucking... Mr. Uh, five. So ready your to hand, go. your girl for your other girlfriend. Yeah, my other girlfriend. <laughs> your girlfriend before you met Britta. What's her name? This one. That dry one. This fucking idiot, cunt, bitch. <laughs> okay, so what did you do? <laughs> we gotta go. So I go to yell at him, and I drive up, and I and I don't know what I'm gonna say. Like I, I obviously I don't even think I was gonna say anything, but yeah. I wanted to really say something. And he rolls down his window next to me, and I'm like, "Oh, he's already anticipating me, fucking going after him." Oh my god, that's how you him. get shot, dude. He pulls out a five dollar bill and gives it to a homeless man. <laughs> oh my! I god. swear to God. And so, like, if I yelled at him, I would just be ye <laughs> yelling oh at a guy god. giving money to a home. Like, and I was like, "How is this the same guy?" <laughs> like, it blew my mind. Like, I that's just was, so funny, dude. It was so funny. <laughs> How it is was, that the same guy? He was like in a hurry to do. There were good. two homeless guys. <laughs> he was he on the goes, way to a soup kitchen. He goes, five for you. Five for you. Like held out. He goes five for you. Aww. Five for you. Like. Two different homeless people. Have you ever given a homeless person over $1? No, but $1. I gave a guy a Dodge Charger who's giving money to a homeless person a, a look. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're that welcome. Was, that's so funny. Oh, my God. I, got, was... I love when life gives you like a bit, like a thing like that that's just so absurd that you can... And on the way to the show, you're already thinking of material, like yes. trying to think of like new stuff, something that you can be excited about. Ugh. And you hate your old stuff, and you're like, just give me something yes. that like, I could like, be excited about. That's and great. then that story I'll hate in like two weeks. I'll be like, yeah, great. Then Did you see me. that? Was my face on the wall there? I don't know. Oh, maybe it was, it was like in the show. Where did, it's a not, cool room. Yeah, it looked like You've been out there? Mm-mm. It's really cool. I just know that my face is on the wall. I've never had my like put picture. There's what maybe one other club that has like you know they always have like comedians on the wall and there's. I only saw one face and of course it was Chappelle and I don't even know where I saw it if it was outside or inside. Yeah. Or whatever. But yeah, I opened for Anthony Devito, who if you don't know who he is, so funny, dude. He's fucking the best. Even off stage too, dude. Anthony Devito is a fantastic. Salt I, of the earth. He really is. Yeah. Man. Salt yeah. to the stage. He's so nice. Oh so my god, nice. we got dinner beforehand and it was like he's doing a special like a, a one man show about his dad who got murdered. Oh my god. Like mob shit. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Which oh is gonna god. come out. He's going to Edinburgh to work. Whatever. Oh, nice. Anyways, yeah. So check well, him check out. Check out Anthony DeVito. Uh and check we'll out be back Anya. tomorrow. Yeah, go see Anya at Rockwood Music Hall. Thank you. Um, and we will be back tomorrow with one more episode. This is a two episode week, but uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Don't be cut and Jack Sparrow. Jack Rockwood Hall, 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> what?